a simple way of creating a fashion illustration in Photoshop can use something as easily accessible as the polygonal lasso tool and the brush. When you're drawing the figure, try to think first of all about the essence of the pose. And a really good thing to look for is the angle of the shoulder, the angle of the hips. Look at the main directions through the figure. If you could try to simplify the figure down into five main movements, what would those movements be? It's also really useful to look at pairs, a pair of shoulders, a pair of hips, a pair of knees, a pair of ankles, a pair of wrists, and think about where they are. So I'm going to start by using the polygonal lasso tool, clicking, moving to a new position, trying to see the figure really simply. Focusing on the space between the features. Once I've defined that shape, I could use the paint bucket tool to flood that shape with colour. Whilst I've selected that shape, I could take my brush, I could change the hue and I can choose obviously different sizes of brush, different kinds of effect of brush and I can start to draw into that shape. I could change colour and play a bit more with maybe the variations of light and dark. Once I'm happy with that I can deselect. I could come down to my colour palette, choose a different colour and start to work into my drawing. For the arms, I'll go back to a version of red and if I hold the shift key down I can move holding the shift key down from one position to another and I'll draw a straight line that color disappeared a little bit there so I'll make that a different hue go back to here click hold the shift key down move again and I've got a straight line from here click move down click across and I join that up and now if I wanted to I could work into that a little bit varying the colour. Obviously when I'm drawing with the brush I can also change the opacity of the brush and I can change the size of the brush. At the moment I've placed this photograph into Photoshop and I've made this drawing in this layer. I'm going to repeat the exercise drawing another couple of characters.
you'll see that this time I've tried to do everything within my selection area. Once I've deselected, I can start to work outside of that shape. Again, I can do something either freehand or I could use the shift key to give me straight lines. Of course, there are hundreds of brushes to choose from and thousands of hues to choose from. Once I've created my drawings, I could select, make sure I select the whole figure. I can copy and paste, in which case I've now got a secondary version of that figure. I could transform that figure. So if I hit Command T, I can now resize that section of the drawing. Bearing in mind, of course, that we're dealing with Photoshop. So if we are working with a small file size when we start to blow up, we will not begin to notice a degree of pixelation. If I wanted to, at the moment, obviously, if I go to my Layers palette, we'll see that we've got a figure in this layer and we've got everything in this layer. What I could start to do is obviously is build up a more comprehensive image if I begin to think about backgrounds by removing maybe this layer and starting to think about what could happen in the background here. A really useful trick here is to think about giving this figure maybe a shadow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose him in this layer. And in order to do that, I'll come down to select and load selection. That grabs what's in this particular layer. I'm going to copy and paste him again. So I've now got a second version of him. And I'm now going to go to image, adjust, hue and saturation. This time I'm going to knock the lightness down completely which will give me a black figure. Now this figure is on a separate layer, so I can change the opacity of that layer. And I can transform that layer. If I now come outside of the transformation, I can slip that on the side. If I hold the Shift key down when I use the Transform tool, I can begin to distort and manipulate my shadow. I'm going to go to the edit menu and I'm going to go to transform and this point in time I'm going to go to skew and I'm going to pull that corner over there. Bring that down a little bit further. Until I'm happy with how that shadow relates to the figure. The shadow at the moment is on top of this figure. So if I move this figure above, now the shadow sits behind. This shadow is in sharp focus. So if I go to filter and I go to blur and I go to Gaussian blur, I can change the amount of blur on my shadow so just to soften the features down. If I put this layer back, obviously I've still got the original photographs, but what that would enable me to do is to go back to here, working in that layer, I can now select him, copy him. I need to make sure there I'm in the right layer, so just make sure that I'm in that layer to do that. So now I'm in that layer, copy him, switch that layer off, Go paste. Now I've got this guy as a separate image and I could think about where I place him into the space. Again, because he's behind the background, I could introduce a new layer and I could use the polygonal lasso tool 
to begin to create some kind of space or shape for those figures to inhabit. As I did before, I could then choose to give this figure a shadow by finding him in the right layer, selecting him, so again, quick load selection. So I'm in the wrong layer there, so I need to deselect. I need to make sure I'm in this layer when I do that. So again, load selection. Still the wrong layer. So I need to work out where he is. I think he's in this layer, layer four. So deselect, that's command D. Back in this layer, load selection. Now I found him. Copy, paste. I've now got another version of him. Command and U is the shortcut for changing hue and saturation. So again, I'm going to change the lightness setting to make him a black figure. Transform him. So if I come outside of that box, I can turn him on the side. I can bring him into position over here. Again, if I use the shift key, I can start to tweak the shadow until I'm happy with the shadow. I could, this time, rather than skew, I could warp my shape. Again, I can change the opacity of that layer. And also change the order of the figures. So that's a simple way of creating a fashion illustration using the polygonal lasso tool, brushes, and don't forget that layers can be made out of focus by placing things like the Gaussian blur as a filter. Again, what's happening here is I've chosen the wrong layer, but then I might use that as a spatial device. If I come back to the shadow layer, and then come back to my filter, Gaussian blur, I've now blurred my shadow. If you do find yourself getting confused as to what layer you're dealing with, you can actually label these things. So I could have written shadow as a reminder that that's my shadow layer.